Welcome back, everybody, to the Rule Your Pool podcast. This is episode 53. It is January of 2022. And uh, so far, we think trade shows are still going to be going on. So I hope they do. I'm Eric Knight, your host. I'm doing this one alone. It's audio only. There's no video. I, d- I didn't think it was necessary to record a video since it's just me talking. I don't have Jared or Joe or Ryan on here. We're doing a topic that, honestly, I've had it on my list of things to do since 2018. <laughs> yeah, I've had this list of blog articles and procedures to write, and it just it never became a really high priority until recently. And it's been on the list. I've known about it. And uh, that was long before we started this podcast. And so we just actually released a procedure on how to address this issue. The blog is coming soon. It is already written, but it's scheduled for publication. And this podcast episode is going to couple along with that pretty well. So this is episode 53. And today we are talking about organic staining. Specifically, we're talking about something called tannins. So let's get into it. Welcome to Rule Your Pool, the podcast by Arenda that explains and simplifies pool chemistry so that anybody, regardless of experience, can understand it. I'm your host, Eric Knight, bringing clarity to these subjects so that you can bring clarity to your water. If you're ready to rule your pool, then let's go. I want you to think for a moment about the drinks that you consume in your everyday life. A lot of people will start their day with coffee or tea. Maybe you wind down the day with some red wine. These drinks are colored because of the plant life that went into creating those drinks. Wine comes from grapes. If it comes from green grapes, or light-colored grapes, it's going to be white wine. If it comes from red grapes or dark grapes, it's usually going to be red wine. Coffee is dark brown because coffee beans are dark brown. This is common sense, but the actual reason for that is something called tannins. Now, as I mentioned before, this has been on our list to talk about for a while because organic staining and discoloration of water, I wouldn't say it's a huge problem, it, it is a common issue, but it's not like a 911 big challenging problem that's super costly because it's actually pretty easy to address. So it wasn't really a priority to talk about, but it is, it, it's common in swimming pools to have one of these two issues with organics, either staining of the surface or discoloration of the water. Same with metals, by the way. I mean, metals can stain a surface and they can also discolor the water. I call that tinging. It tinged the water brown or it tinged the water green. That, that's my term. I mean, we use it at Arenda because, you know, it makes sense. You know, there's this little green tinge to the water, but um, organics can do the same thing. Tannins can do the same thing. So basically what they are, according to Wikipedia, is polyphenolic biomolecules. Or in English, these are components of plant life that when that um, that piece of plant life dies and decays can be released, especially in water. Now, it doesn't have to be chlorinated water. You know, I had this, uh, this bucket in my backyard, and I had big oak trees in my yard, and I just left the bucket out there, forgot what it was for. I was totally neglecting it, not thinking about it. And, you know, rain happens, and leaves fall, acorns fall. And anyway, um, after several months, a lot of leaves and acorns got in that bucket along with a lot of rainwater, and it was pretty nasty. So when I poured out those leaves, the leaves at the bottom were actually almost gray. They had lost so much color, and the water was just dark brown. It just looked disgusting. Well, that's because the tannins had come out of the leaves and the acorns and had discolored the water. The same thing can happen to your swimming pool. Okay, now uh, we're just going to talk about those two issues here. It doesn't have to be a very long episode. This is common, but it's also common sense. Um, Staining is the first issue, and discoloration or tinging is the second. So let's start with staining. Anything that drops off of trees probably has tannins in it. I'm talking about, obviously, leaves, acorns, pine needles, 
uh, pine cones. Um, let's see, uh, yeah, those like berry things that fall off. Um, certain oak trees have those, you know, clearly I'm a botanist here, but it's like those fluffy seed pod things that drop down in the springtime. You know what I'm talking about? They're not acorns, but they're, uh, gosh, they make such a mess. They're like the bane of my existence in March through May. And anyways, those get into pools too. All these things that can get into pools are bound to have tannins in them. They're also bound to use up a lot of chlorine. We've done a lot of green pool cleanups in our day at Arenda. And a lot of times it's those organics that cause a pool to flip into a swamp pool. It overwhelms chlorine. This organic material that falls down from the trees just gets in the pool and just starts discoloring it. And of, of course, algae eventually takes over because, well, chlorine's attacking this stuff and gets used up. If the pool is neglected, it's not cleaned out. Yeah, you, you can lose control of the pool pretty fast. Nothing will replace physically cleaning this stuff out. I want that to be very clear. There's no amount of chemistry that is going to overpower, you know, 500 leaves a week falling into the pool. And maybe 500 is a, a light number. At least for my yard, I had these pin oak trees. Oh, 500. Try 5,000 leaves, maybe. Who knows? I mean, who counts them? Just piles and piles of leaves. I went to a pool a few years ago for a green pool cleanup, and I got there and the water was not green. It actually looked more like coffee. I mean, it was dark brown, if not black. And it had some trees. I don't, I can't really identify them, but they had this, these weird seed pod things that dropped off the trees. It also had some holly bushes that dropped red berries into the pool. But anyways, these seeds would drop into the water and you could see the green come around. Like as soon as this thing would hit the water, it, there would just be this little ring of green stuff bleeding out of these seed pods. Maybe it was pollen or I'm not sure exactly what it was initially, but when those things broke down, it changed the color of the water. Yes, of course, there was algae in the pool, but it wasn't just algae. I mean, this was not a typical green pool cleanup. When we put the enzyme CV700 in there, we purged. And this was actually a customer who had basically thrown everything, including the kitchen sink at this pool, and he just couldn't break it. Just could not break the oxidant load, the, the organic load. Because it wasn't primarily algae, we learned. You know, you can nuke it with algicide and chlorine all you want, but if it's not all algae, you know, it doesn't mean this stuff is all living. Usually when a green pool is a swamp, it's not all algae. A lot of it is decaying organics. It's already dead. So chlorine isn't going to kill it. It's going to have to try to oxidize it. And as we've discussed in pillar number two of our four pillars program, chlorine is not nearly as good of an oxidizer as it is a sanitizer. So it's way easier for chlorine to kill algae than it is to oxidize tannins and decaying organic material. So anyways, these seeds were falling by the thousand. I mean, it was just all over the pool. So you have to clean it up and nothing replaces that. There is there is no chemistry that can just overpower neglecting a pool. No, you have to continually vacuum this stuff out. You got to net it out. You got to clean out the strainer baskets. And of course, on a weekly route, that's pretty difficult. You know, the best thing to do would be to prune back the trees so that they don't drop into the pool. But, you know, sometimes you can't do that. It's really up to the homeowner. So homeowners listening to this, if you have a pesky tree that is dropping things into your pool, you might want to strongly consider pruning that tree back so that this stuff does not get into the pool because it really complicates chemistry. So the way that staining occurs is this material, whether it's an acorn or a, a seed pod or a berry or whatever it is, gets next to the surface. And this can be a vinyl liner surface, fiberglass, it doesn't matter. This is not a uh, water chemistry thing, really. It's just an organic chemistry thing. And the tannins bleed out of that decaying organic material, and it sticks to your surface. It's that simple. Leaf stains, acorn stains. Uh, it, leaf stains are actually usually pretty easy to see because they're the shape of leaves. Imagine that. I actually had it on my back uh, porch, too. Actually, right next to the bucket. Lots of leaves. Lots of leaves that I did not sweep up because 
the pin oak tree was massive. It's an old tree. It's probably 100 years old. And it just drops way more leaves and acorns than I could deal with. And when I finally would clean it up, you know, after several months of dropping, like probably November or something, the concrete underneath had tons of leaf stains and it was just like brown. The whole concrete was brown. So I would pressure wash it. And boy, is that satisfying because pressure washing just removes all that staining. And it's, it's kind of addictive. You can see the difference in color so well. Well, the same thing's happening to the concrete in your pool or the vinyl liner or the fiberglass. It's just the tan that the tannins bled out and they stuck to the surface. That's it. Doesn't really have to do with much else. You know, it'll happen in any water chemistry in your pool, basically. And uh, that's that. We're going to talk about preventing and removing here in just a minute. Let's talk first about the second issue, which is discoloration of water. The same thing can occur if it doesn't adhere to your surfaces, that the tannins just stay in your water, and eventually they'll probably discolor the surface a little bit. But let's say the leaves don't sink. Let's say they float. Let's say that these berries float. In fact, holly berries will. These red berries, oh my gosh, they will soak up your chlorine demand because they don't actually sink. At least they don't for a while. A lot of them are going to wind up in your skimmer basket, but a lot of them are just going to stay in the pool and float around, you know, next to the tile, you know, next to the uh, water line, and it'll stain that tile. I've seen it. Organics tend to float. So the tile line can get very discolored. And eventually the water is going to tinge into a ugly color. A lot of leaves, pine needles, these kind of things. So if they don't sink, eventually they, they probably will, but not all of them. If they don't sink, they're probably going to actually bleed their tannins into suspension, so to speak, and the water is going to change colors. Again, there is no replacement for getting this material out. Now, pools with auto covers that close frequently, they tend to have less issue with this because... Well, it should be obvious the auto cover captures this stuff. So keep that in mind. Now, before talking about prevention, let's talk about what's happening in the winter. And the reason we're talking about this in January is because most water discoloration actually happens right now in the wintertime. Because those with mesh covers, there's probably a lot of leaves, pine needles, acorns, whatever, on top of your cover. If you don't take a leaf blower and clear off that organic material, it's going to weigh down that cover eventually. Every bit of rain and snow is going to be taking de decaying tannins through that mesh cover and discoloring your pool. And eventually, there's enough rain and snow that the water level underneath the cover rises up to, to touch the cover, and the weight of those leaves will actually push it in, and then you get a sort of a tea bag effect where the leaves and acorns or whatever else are actively bleeding into the pool because that now they're submerged. They're just on the other side of a mesh cover, just like a tea bag in, a, in hot water. So that's really a very, very common issue. And it's a very simple solution. Once again, nothing replaces cleaning organic material away. Take a leaf blower, clear the leaves and stuff off the cover. It's that easy. Just do that pretty regularly and you're not going to have this problem. It's those that get neglected and they let piles and piles of organics stay on top of the cover that have the issues with discoloration. And that these are the pools that when your service company comes back in April or May to open up that pool and it's disgusting underneath, it's probably because of tannins, a little bit because of algae probably at that point, but generally tannins. Yeah, you can have algae, but algae doesn't grow in cold water very easily. Tannins don't care. Tannins are just going to discolor water no matter what the temperature is. Now let's talk about cleaning it up. According to all the forums online and, you know, advice that you can do on a simple online search, everybody just says raise your chlorine level. Shock it. You don't necessarily even have to shock it. You just need a good amount of chlorine and you'll oxidize it and you can sort of bleach these things out. And that's true for the most part, but it is... It is not the most efficient way, in my opinion, of getting rid of these things. Yes, you can have good chlorine levels, and you will prevent the stains from occurring. You can prevent the discoloration from occurring. 
But again, if you leave those leaves in there, they will eventually overpower your chlorine. There's going to be enough of them, and it takes a lot of chlorine to oxidize a leaf out of your pool or an acorn. You have to be cleaning these pools. So if you're a homeowner, a DIYer, and you're not actually cleaning these things out, you're not emptying your strainer basket, you're not emptying your skimmer basket, eventually they're going to win the leaves, the acorns, the pine needles, whatever. If you already have a stain, and it's the shape of a leaf or whatever it is, it's an organic stain, just simply raising the chlorine level might not be enough. You might actually have to actively scrub that. You might need a diamond pad. You might, well, not for a final liner, but uh, you might want to take a concentrated amount of chlorine, maybe spot treat it, pour it down a two inch PVC pipe, get chlorine directly on it, brush like crazy, and it should come up. As you know, this is our podcast. We really don't talk about products very often, but this is a perfect opportunity to subtly indoctrinate you into what we do. Enzymes are awesome at handling this problem. These are organic materials that are discoloring or staining your pool. Enzymes break down and remove organic materials from your pool. They devour tannins. They're perfect for it. So when we close the pool, the Arenda winterization protocol, of course, focuses on LSI first, but it also involves adding enzymes before you close. Enzymes devour tannins. Now, enzymes are not living, so in, in the cold water, they work slower, but certainly in the springtime, they're still in your water, and they are going to break down tannins much more efficiently than chlorine can and help you get them out. It is very hard to get leaf stains in a pool that you are regularly treating with CV600 or CV700. I guess it could happen if you leave them in there for months and months and months and not circulate enough so that they're moving around. Yeah, if they're just sitting there stagnant, yeah, I can't really help you with that. But for tannins to come out of decaying organics in an enzyme pool and still actually discolor the water or stain would be very, very hard. Be rare. So, in my opinion, the best defense against this is, of course, clean the organic material out. Prune your trees back, things like that. Try to get less into your pool. Address the source, of course. And if you do have a lot of foliage around your pool, use enzymes. It'll help you. You don't have to shock your pool with chlorine anymore. You just act normally. Just get the material out of the pool. Enzymes will handle the rest. Then that goes for both staining and for discolorations. But again, it's not going to stop, like in the wintertime, it's not going to overpower a big pile of leaves and pine needles and whatever else on top of a mesh cover that's soaking into your pool. That still has to be addressed. And it's kind of like anything. I mean, we can't guarantee the results of our product if you're not doing your part. But if you are doing your part and you are getting, you know, leaves out of your pool regularly, you're vacuuming, you're cleaning out your skimmer basket, things like that, you're doing your part and you don't have to be perfect, but you're doing a decent job. Yeah. Enzymes are going to stop this problem. So it's a great defense against tannins. And that's pretty much it for this episode. I mean, it, you can see why it wasn't uh, a big, big priority for us to talk about it. Cause it was, it just seemed so common sense, I guess, that we just didn't feel the need to really talk about it. But now I'm hearing from people that are telling me, hey, uh, we've got these organic stains. And I guess one, one final thing before we, uh, before we wrap up here. How do you know if it's an organic issue or a metals issue? It's a big question online. Well, you can do the white bucket test. We've talked about this in previous episodes. We talk about it in several procedures and blogs. Take a white bucket, a clean white bucket, grab a scoop of water. Let's say the water is green. Is it algae? Is it copper? Is it tannins? Well, just put a little bit of liquid chlorine in there and stir it. You'll know within, certainly within 30 seconds or so, if it cleared up, it was either algae or it was tannins. It was something that chlorine could wipe out. If it gets darker, it was probably metals because it oxidized and it changed the color even worse. If it does nothing, especially in a green pool, Check your ratio of alkalinity 
to calcium hardness. That sometimes cleans it right up. That's a little bit unrelated, but if you want to learn more about the white bucket test, go on the Arenda app, go to procedures. It's one of the first ones on there, but just type in bucket. You'll find it. And it's just a simple procedure to identify why your water is discolored. If you're looking to identify if it's a stain that's organic or metals, put a little citric acid on it. And citric acid is going to react better with metals than it will with um, organics. You could also do that with chlorine. You could put some granular chlorine on that stain, you know, give it 60 seconds or so. And if it cleaned right up, it was probably organic because if it was metals, chlorine would not. It would probably make it actually darker. So anyway, I'm just saying organic stains might look like metals. Sometimes it's both involved, but uh, in general, if you have an enzyme pool, you're not going to have an organic staining issue. If you do, you're missing something. Probably need to have a more robust cleaning policy. Anyway, I'm Eric Knight with Arenda. This has been episode 53 of the Rule Your Pool podcast. If you have any questions or you have topics that you would like us to discuss, podcast at orendatech.com. That's podcast at orenda, T-E-C-H, dot com. That's the special email just for you listeners. And for those of you who are reaching out to us through the podcast email, thank you. Uh, we are writing down your requests. And um, this was actually requested a couple months ago. So glad we got this one knocked out. If there's questions you have, just let us know. Thanks so much, everybody. Take care. Thank you for listening to Rule Your Pool, a podcast by Orenda Technologies. For more information on what we discussed in this week's episode, check the links in the description or visit www.orendatech.com. I hope you find this show valuable enough that you tap that subscribe button and share it with your friends. You can also like us on Facebook and social media. And with our help, you'll be able to rule your pool without over-treating it with chemicals and wasting money. I'll see you next episode.